Well, let me first just start by saying welcome to the White House. Thank you so much for being with us here today um, for our ACA Open Enrollment Kickoff event. Um, we are so excited that we are already two full weeks into open enrollment um, and have had an excellent start. Uh, and today is an opportunity to talk through uh, what the remaining weeks of open enrollment, not just uh, until that December 15th deadline to get that January 1st coverage, uh, but until that final deadline on January 31st will look like. We'll share and hear some best practices from some incredible advocates from across the country, um, and we will celebrate uh, what is going to be an excellent open enrollment. And to kick us off this morning, I am absolutely honored um, to be introducing uh, who is our team leader, um, our fearless leader, and uh, under her leadership, millions of Americans have gotten coverage um, through the Affordable Care Act and in the marketplaces, um, and we can't wait for millions more in these remaining days of this administration to cover, uh, to cover millions more. So I'd now like to introduce Secretary Secretary Sylvia Matthews Burwell. Thank you very much, Bess, and welcome to the White House. Uh, over the past three open enrollments, so many of you have welcomed all of us in the places where you work, and we thought it would be nice to return the favor. So welcome to the White House today. And I hope that you all will have a chance to at least look around and appreciate the setting that you're in. On these grounds, over the past eight years, the White House has been home to two individuals who have led our nation with dignity, who have been loyal, smart, and very well-groomed. Of course, I'm talking about the first dogs, <laughs> Bo and Sonny. More seriously, history has taken place in these halls, and major treaties have been negotiated, budget deals have been hammered out, and the future of our nation has been shaped by men and women who are working here. In fact, not far from here, in the East Room about six years and eight months ago, President Obama signed the Affordable Care Act and our nation declared that health care was a right for all, not just a privilege. And I know that this last week, I know that this last week has been tough, but the Affordable Care Act is the law of the land. And the American people do not want to go back. They want Republicans and Democrats to come together and make the law better. And in the meantime, we're going to keep helping Americans access the coverage that they both want and they need. The discussions and debates that happen in these halls and in this town are important. But they're important because they touch the lives of everyone in this country. You all have seen that in action, and you have been instrumental in translating the Affordable Care Act into bettering the lives of people. In fact, thanks to the Affordable Care Act and your work, millions of Americans are living better lives than they were just seven years ago. You know all the facts well, but I think this kind of progress bears repeating. Before the law, nearly 50 million Americans did not have health insurance. Americans with pre-existing conditions, people with diabetes, or people who had beaten cancer often found themselves locked out of health insurance and therefore health care. Middle class families who didn't have coverage through a job usually got no help in paying for it. Women could be charged more for coverage than men just because of their gender. Before the law, people who did have coverage didn't always get good value. Coverage didn't guarantee access to quality care. And because of annual or lifetime limits on coverage, millions were still just one illness away from financial ruin or the very real possibility that they'd have to forego a treatment for a life-threatening disease. Before the law, our broken health care system was rapidly growing more and more expensive. Between 2000, 2000 and 2010, premiums for family coverage through an employer, when you get your coverage through your job, have rose by almost 8% every year. Too many Americans were locked out of coverage. Too many health plans didn't actually protect their consumers. And health care costs were rising too fast. And that's why many of you spoke up. You knocked on doors, you made your voices heard, and with the Affordable Care Act, we have made historic progress. First, 
we opened the door to coverage. 20 million more Americans have coverage today thanks to the law and thanks to the work that all of you all have done. Our uninsured rate is the lowest in our nation's history. We have to make that message heard, lowest in history. Today, a mother who survived breast cancer can't be denied coverage because of her pre-existing condition. And a young college grad can stay on her dad's health plan until she's 26. Second, we made coverage better. Today, more than 138 million Americans can get annual physicals, cancer screenings, and certain other preventative services without a copayment, including contraception. Plans are required to cover the core benefits you'd expect from insurance. No surprises. And no insurer can impose annual or lifetime dollar limits on your coverage. And third, while there's still more to do, we finally have started to control health care costs. For the 157 million Americans who have their health insurance through their job, premium growth has slowed since 2010. And the overall health care prices have been rising at their slowest rate in 50 years. This is real progress, and we owe so much of it to you all. That's what has happened. And let's talk about what has not happened. Some said the law would be a job killer. In reality, U.S. businesses have added 15.3 million jobs since the law passed. And we've had the longest streak of private sector job growth on record. Some claimed that millions of Americans would be kicked off their employer's health insurance. But in reality, the percentage of people who get coverage through their employer has stayed about the same. And at the same time, the share of working people who are uninsured has plummeted. And over and over, some have predicted that the law was doomed. They said it in the winter of 2010 before the Affordable Care Act even passed. And then the president signed it to, into law. They said it in the fall of 2013. And then more than 8 million people signed up for coverage. They've said it when we face threats in the courts and when we say, face threats from Congress. Each time and every time, we have persevered. Each and every time, we have continued to make progress for the American people. So that's what you can say when critics of the law start to make the same old claims or when pundits are busy making their predictions. Because we've still got work to do. And right now, during this open enrollment, we're going to do it. There are still people out there who need coverage but don't know how to get it. There are people who think that coverage won't fit in their budget or people who don't even know how health coverage can help them. And that's where we need you all. As you all know, the health insurance marketplace is open for business. And here are the three messages that we need to get out between now and January 31st. First, financial help is available to make coverage more affordable. Most people shopping on healthcare.gov can find a plan for $75 or less a month in premiums after tax credits. And most people who are uninsured but eligible for marketplace coverage, that's about 85% of those, could qualify for financial assistance. Second, it's easier than ever to sign up. Once people have signed in, they can immediately see what kind of coverage they qualify for and how much financial help they can get. People can even sort plans based on whether their doctor is included or if a certain medication is needed. So both new and returning consumers should definitely come and shop on healthcare.gov this year. Last year, 60% of the people who actively re-enrolled in the marketplace plan through 20, for 2016 through healthcare.gov switched to a different plan. The savings on average was $43 a month or about $500 a year after their tax credits. Third, people don't have to shop alone. This is a big decision and many people want help. They can get free and confidential help in person or over in the phone, in English or in Spanish, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Financial assistance, it's easy to sign up and help is available. Those are our top three messages for the next two months. 
Now, there's a lot that we have learned from the past three open enrollments, and I'm sure we'll talk more about those lessons today as part of the session. For example, we know that people who shop around will find competition and choice in different plans. We know that if people already have coverage through the marketplace, they could save hundreds per year for shopping for a cheaper plan. But there are some lessons you don't learn from data or a spreadsheet, like what it means to a worried father to finally get his family covered, or how thankful a young mother is that she doesn't have to pay an additional copay for her kids' vaccines, or how much brighter the future will be if a young person can have health coverage and stay on their parents' plan till they can get on their path to success. I know that the past few years have taken a lot of work from everybody in this room, and I've had the chance to see some of it firsthand when I'm out visiting. During the last open enrollment, for example, I went and got to join the team of Power 98 FM led by No Limit Larry and Miss Jessica as they spread the word about affordable quality coverage in Charlotte, North Carolina. I got to learn how to dab. <laughs> and I was just kind of thinking that, you know, if Cam's looking for a backup, I'm available in January. <laughs> I also had the chance to travel. I'm pretty good. Um, maybe a little more fitness training since been a little busy. I also have had the chance to travel uh, to Dallas and meet with the members of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. I always say, if you want to get it done, call the Deltas. And they've been instrumental in every open enrollment, leveraging their vast network to host enrollment events, conduct faith-based outreach, and tape PSAs. As a matter of fact, I recently just taped this year's PSA with the Deltas, and I think it's going to go viral. I know a lot of people have asked what the election means for open enrollment, and some of them some of you all have probably asked that yourselves and you've been asked that question. But the American people actually have already gone ahead and answered that question for us and they did it on Wednesday, the day after the election, when more than 100,000 people signed up for coverage on healthcare.gov. People still want and still need affordable quality coverage for 2017 and healthcare.gov still offers it. The Affordable Care Act is now woven into the fabric of our nation, and a strong open enrollment this year will just make that even more true. And thanks to your work and your leadership in your communities and across the nation, we have made history. Millions of Americans are better off for your work, and there are so many more that we can help this open enrollment. Today's panels and roundtables and discussions will help us figure out exactly how we can do that best. But I know a lot of you are coming here and you may be a little bit weary. You've been hard at work in your own communities to protect the progress we've made and to make sure that we keep moving forward. And we're counting on you all to help us keep moving forward. When the Affordable Care Act passed, Congressman John Lewis summed it up by saying, we may not have chosen the time, but the time has chosen us. And as the youngest speaker at the March on Washington, he knows a thing or two about when time chooses. The time may be running out for this administration, but it has chosen all of you to carry on this dream to build a healthier community and nation together. So let's meet the moment, let's come together, and let's get this work done. And let's get people covered. Thank you all. So as part of today, as part of today, we want everybody using their social media, using their signs, and I'm going to attempt to lead by example. So I'm going to come down right now with my sign, with my phone, to do the selfie. So if folks can kind of scoot in, some folks get up and scoot in around me, we will do the business. I don't have a stick. <laughs>
Well, thank you to Secretary Burwell, and uh, I think that it couldn't be uh, more in encouraging to hear of time choosing all of us. Um, and uh, as we talk about time, uh, we also have a limited amount of it. Um, and so we need to make the most of every second that we have got during this open enrollment period that goes until January 31st um, to put as much as we can uh, into the communities that we're all a part of to make sure that we're reaching as many folks, millions of folks as we possibly can. So Angela and I are gonna talk through a little bit about uh, some of the organizing tactics, important dates for folks to be aware of um, over the course of now and January 31st. So the first are these key dates up here. Obviously, open enrollment started on November 1st, um, but December 15th is a very important date. Um, and it's important for a couple of reasons. Obviously, it's the day that folks need to make sure that they get covered to have that coverage that starts January 1st. Um, but one of the things that we've also realized that the Secretary mentioned um, and that many of you are acutely aware of is that deadlines really matter to consumers. They are an incredible driver of action. And that decision December 15th deadline to get that January 1st coverage is going to be a huge day for us on enrollment. Um, and part of the uh, of the wonderful aspect of all of this talk uh, over the last six years about health insurance is that we have a more educated consumer. And so they know that if they want to get covered, they're going to get covered for that January 1st, that January 1st coverage. And so that December 15th deadline um, may just be our biggest day on healthcare.gov and in our, in our uh, enrollment communities. And so making sure that we're really driving folks to that December 15th deadline is incredible incredibly important. Uh, December 31st, the day that folks uh, is the last day for coverage for the 2016 year. So if they're switching plans, if they're a consumer that came into the marketplace, shopped and saved, um, then they are going to, uh, that coverage is going to end on the 31st and start again on January 1st. And then that's also the day, the day that that December 15th coverage starts. We've got another deadline on January 15th, traditionally not um, as big as say our December 15th or January 31st deadlines, but another deadline nonetheless that we want to be able to drive folks to. Um, that is the deadline to get coverage that begins on February 1st, and then the final open enrollment deadline, January 31st, um, for that March 1 coverage. Um, and so I think that the key dates there for folks to really be organizing around December 15th, January 31st, and then that January 15th deadline as well. Partners to consider. Um, our wonderful panel is going to talk through some of the best practices that they've learned about partnerships within their community, um, on the state level, on the national level. But so folks sort of know what we're thinking uh, and maybe even know who's in this room. Um, a huge aspect of the partnerships that we've developed over this open enrollment period focus on really meeting people where they are. So you'll see small business owners on here, on-demand economy partners, maybe less in the individual that's getting into the lift and more in the individual that's driving the lift. The person that's doing uh, the uh, delivering of the groceries, making sure that those folks that are a part of the on-demand economy that may not get that employer-based coverage, that we're talking to them. Um, the next is local elected officials. Uh, last year, we had the Healthy Communities Challenge, as folks in this room maybe remember, uh, Go Milwaukee, who won. Um, and this year, we are utilizing our local elected officials to partner with colleges, universities, and community colleges across the country as part of our Healthy Campus Challenge. We'll announce later this week uh, how many campuses we have signed up, where those campuses are. Um, I have to say that we had an incredible response um, to colleges, universities, and community colleges wanting to make sure that they were reaching their students staff, their students, their faculty, their alumni, and their community members to really make sure that they knew about open enrollment. And so we'll be leaning on our elected officials to help uh, contribute to those efforts uh, and make sure that information is getting out to communities across the country. And we'll talk about some of our target communities in a second. Uh, faith leaders and faith institutions. I know that there are many faith leaders in this room. Um, and we're thrilled to be utilizing the trust that you have within your community to make sure that folks don't just know about this, but listen when we say it's time to get covered now is the time. And so huge thanks to our faith leaders in the room who are contributing to those efforts. Um, our local coalitions, uh, I know that uh, we have folks from all of our coalitions across the country in this room. Um, these are folks that are a part of organizations that maybe haven't traditionally focused on health insurance, focused on health. Um, but because of the incredible work of our regional HHS directors um, and our partners across the country, they have really opted in to this movement in a way that is unprecedented. And so making sure that we're working with those local coalitions on the ground um, to reach people in places where they might not think of health, but they now will see that they need to get covered. 
um, our digital and community influencers. We've got quite a few in the room today, making sure that they're utilizing social media, utilizing their channels to really amplify open enrollment. So a huge thanks to those folks. Um, providers, uh, making sure that we're having doctors and nurses, physicians assistants, nurse practitioners talk to their patients, um, especially their patients that are coming in the door, maybe paying cash or coming in the door, maybe to an emergency clinic because they don't have that insurance and making sure that they're sharing that information and sort of getting them through the process of getting covered. Um, and then our patient groups. Um, uh, I know that they have been some of our most fierce advocates, um, the American Diabetes Association, the American Heart and Stroke Association, um, and other patient group communities that are really making sure uh, that they're not just talking to the folks um, that are experiencing those uh, chronic diseases, but in addition to that are talking to their friends and their families um, and the folks that are coming to their walks and runs across the country over the course of open enrollment. So um, a, a nice subset of folks that we are really focusing our efforts and our partnerships on um, and, and really excited about all of those and a, and a thanks to those folks that are in the room from those communities. Um, I have our target geographic communities on this list um, and these are the places where we really think that we can make the biggest impact um, and that we think the, that a huge portion of the remaining eligible uninsured are, folks that are eligible for marketplace coverage. Um, and so you'll see those up on this screen. We'll circulate this around to folks that are in the room today so you don't have to furiously take all 15 down on your uh, in your notes. Um, but I want to also make it clear that if you don't see your community on this list, it doesn't mean that we're not focused on it. It just means that it might be a smaller subset of the uh, eligible uninsured population in your community. But an enrollment is an enrollment is an enrollment. Um, getting someone covered is changing a life. And so even if it's not in one of these top 15 communities where we think we can make the biggest impact with our efforts, um, it doesn't mean that we're not doing everything that we can in every community that we can uh, to make sure that folks are getting covered. So we'll go to the next slide. And then here are our weeks of action. I think for many folks in this room, um, you may have already seen this. It goes all the way back to October, sort of in the lead up uh, to open enrollment. Um, but making sure that we're organizing around common themes um, and taking advantage of natural narratives, right? So you'll see that for the week of Thanksgiving, we've got our Thankful for Coverage Week of Action. And since it's Small Business Saturday, we'll be amplifying our work with small businesses on that day. Um, making sure that we're talking about how thankful we are for the coverage that we have, um, maybe what we're thankful for about the Affordable Care Act, um, and you'll see different influencers and leadership from here um, and from HHS doing just that. Um, similarly, as we head into our big deadline weeks, week of November 28th, week of December 5th, week of December 12th, um, you'll see those deadline pushes and a lot of constituencies organizing around those weeks to make sure that they're taking advantage of that natural consumer behavior of wanting to get covered before that deadline. Um, and so you'll see that there. And then all the way through till January 31st, making sure that we're, um, that we're engaged a variety of our communities the um, and working with groups within those communities to make sure that they're doing Twitter chats that they're doing big events in communities across the country that they're doing big stakeholder calls that we're doing Twitter storms from here that we've got Facebook posts um, from all of our leadership here um, and I think that as over the course of open enrollment again we'll send this out but the hope is is that even if you don't have this list in front of you you can kind of tell from the outside exactly what we're focused on uh, each and every week so this week really focused on our Native American week of action in our rural health week um, and then next week going into that thankful for coverage so um, as folks are doing their planning we hope you'll use this as a guide um, and we hope that you'll engage uh, specific communities around their weeks of action uh, making sure that we're always talking about the overall messaging of affordability and those deadlines um, so this is a little bit of a snapshot of how we're focusing our efforts from here and from HHS um, and really excited to work with each and every one of you to make sure that we're making these as impactful as we possibly can um, and really driving home this message to make sure that folks get that coverage during this open enrollment period um, and we enroll millions more this time so I'll turn it over to Angela to add a little bit yeah I'm just gonna keep this very brief first of all thank you all for everything that you've done over the years and for those of you who are new or maybe joining us over live stream who are new to this effort or want to get involved um, thank you for joining um, thank you for being interested in wanting to enroll uh, more folks into affordable care I did want to mention that uh, we do have uh, HHS regional directors in 10 regions, 
If you have not been a part of this movement and want to figure out how to become a part of it, how to join your coalitions, how to do some of the theme week activities that we have going on, please reach out to your regional offices. Um, we have it right on the hhs.gov uh, homepage. Just look for uh, HHS regional offices and we'll make sure that you get involved. And then again, um, Bess and myself, Angela, are always a resource to you. Uh, so please, for those of you who are in the room, um, find us afterwards. Um, we wanna make sure that you're getting what you need to reach uh, any of the communities that you're reaching out to. And that's all I have. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the White House. I want to begin by just saying thank you. Everyone in this room and all those who are watching on home have done so much to bring the dignity to literally millions of Americans across our country who, thanks to the Affordable Care Act, have better health insurance, many for the first time than they've ever had before. And we know it wouldn't have happened without your full support and engagement. I was thinking when I was walking over here about a young woman who used to work here on my team named Ashley By. I met her, my goodness, nearly 10 years ago uh, in South Carolina. And I was visiting South Carolina in the course of the president's run for office and she'd assembled a group of people around the table. And my job was to come in and talk about the president and why I supported his run, or then senator, why I supported his run. And she began by telling her story. And her story was a story about her mom, who didn't have insurance and because uh, she couldn't afford it. And uh, she had had cancer and had been treated and was in remission. And so she made the decision that so many Americans make all the time, was that she wouldn't choose to pay for the insurance that was expensive. She would gamble. And she gambled and lost. And um, they ran into horrible financial trouble as a result of it. And as she told me the story about how she used to eat, um, ask her mother for sandwiches that were made out of tomato sauce or mustard, just a condiment sandwich because she knew they weren't expensive. And it was a way that she, at age eight, could make a contribution to her family income. And I've never forgotten that story. And it was part of what made Ashley want to work so hard on behalf of this president because she knew that he would bring health insurance to people like her mom. Well, fortunately, her mom was able to get treated and did recover, uh, and Ashley did come and work here with us for a number of years, and I just heard from her last week. And I mentioned that story because I think it's, uh, we, we spend a great deal of time here at the federal government talking about big numbers, and 20 million people, that's just an amazing accomplishment, and counting. The fact that last week we had a day where we um, enrolled 100,000 people in one day, that's just amazing, you guys. But behind those statistics are real people, real people whose lives have been dramatically improved. And so um, in this enrollment period, for as long as the president is in office, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that other daughters like Ashley don't have to worry about their moms. And I had the same time I've met so many moms who had children who were ill. And I, as a mother, I can't imagine anything more painful than not being able to take care of my daughter if she was sick. And there were countless moms all across our country who were not taking care of their children and certainly weren't taking care of themselves. And now, obviously, they can take care of themselves and have preventive care without a copay. And so explaining to people all across our country why the Affordable Care Act is so important uh, is a story that you all are uniquely qualified to tell. And tell it loud and clear and be so proud of what we've done because it has changed the face of America. And it's, um, it is something that I hope you all take such great pride in, just as we do. But our work isn't done, and it might get harder, but we still have to stay committed. So again, I want to close the way I started by just saying thank you. You guys are just amazing. And as I look back, I've had the privilege of being here since day one. When I think back over the last nearly eight years, what has been most gratifying is when ordinary people do extraordinary things. And that's what makes this country extraordinary, and it's what makes each of what you have done, uh, each of your accomplishments individually and collectively extraordinary. And so thank you. Thank you very much, everybody.
Thank you so much, Valerie. And a final thank you to everyone in this room. Um, while the event may be over, we expect that all day today, the Get Covered hashtag will be used by each and every one of you here uh, here and, uh, and online, uh, those that are watching from the live stream. So uh, please make sure that you tweet about today's event, but also uh, that you tweet to us about exactly how you are working in your communities uh, and we'll amplify from here. We are so thankful for your work, um, so thankful for the life-changing work that you do, um, and we are excited to continue to get to work uh, to make sure that more folks get covered uh, between now and the end of open enrollment. So thank you all so much. Thank you.